Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News for this Monday, January 20. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. There are more breaches at another agency supervised by the Education Ministry. The Auditor General is reporting insufficient oversight for the Jamaica Library Service as well as poor governance issues. TVJ's O'Shane Masters reports. Among the issues revealed in the AG's report on the library service include outstanding financial statements, impaired oversight and accountability process, narrow focus of the board of directors and inadequate parent ministry strategic support. These were listed as a major downfall for the library service. According to the report, the Jamaica Library Service Board of Directors failed to prepare annual reports and financial statements. Statutory regulations were also breached by the JLS in its failure to submit to the responsible minister the required annual report since 2014-15. Questions were also raised regarding the lack of audited financial statements for budgetary support of some $4.7 billion dollars which the JLS received between 2014-15 and 2018-19, and revenues which it collected from income-generating activities. With that, the Auditor General says, based on the non-submission of the annual reports and audited financial statements for five years, the level of oversight that could be provided by Parliament and the process of holding management accountable for their performance was diminished. The issue was further compounded by what the Auditor General termed a weak internal control function as it says there was no evidence that the JLS internal audit team carried out any reviews of the operations of a JLS head office within the last seven years, 2012 to 2019. There were also similar breaches at the JLS as with the Caribbean Maritime University CMU. The Auditor General noted that the Library Service did not have contracts in place to govern the provision of security services at its head office and two other locations. According to the report, the JLS engaged three security companies without written contracts and made payments totaling $20.6 million between April 2016 to August 2019. In her recommendation, the Auditor General says the Board of Directors must improve the oversight of a GLS. She also says the Education Ministry should ensure the GLS complies with its reporting obligations. It also called for all outstanding annual reports, including financial statements, to be prepared and presented for auditing. In terms of procurement for security services, it was recommended that the JLS regularize contracts by adhering to the procurement guidelines in the selection and awarding of contracts in the short term. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. There are calls this afternoon for the entire Council of the Caribbean Maritime University to resign following the damning findings of the Auditor General's Department. The report has not been tabled in Parliament. However, the document has revealed rampant financial, procurement and human resource breaches. The Sunday Gleaner reported yesterday that businessman Roger Hines confirmed his resignation from the council, which oversees operations at the CMU. Political commentator Shalman Scott says the other council members should follow suit, especially if they believe they did nothing we are wrong. Not anxious to try anybody and to arrive at, at any final conclusion, but it is wise for the present, the entire board, to step aside and to do so quickly, especially if they feel that the individuals on the board feel that they are not guilty of any wrongdoing, and to allow for the most thorough investigation and for action to be taken consequent on, on those investigations. The Auditor General's Department has outlined unsupported payments totaling 332.9 million Jamaican dollars and 293,445 US dollars. Weak financial controls allowed for the improper transfer of 145 million Jamaican dollars from the CMU's bank account to a trust fund with no accountability for how the money was later spent. The report also highlighted procurement breaches amounting to more than 217.7 million Jamaican dollars and almost 1 million U.S. dollars. Criminal charges have been laid against CMU President Dr. Fritz Spinnock and former Education Minister Ruel Reed 
in relation to some of the irregularities at the university. Meanwhile, CMU Board Chairman Hyacinth Bennett has confirmed the resignation of businessman Roger Hines from the council. She, however, refused to say whether she will resign. Mrs. Bennett says a meeting will be held on Wednesday with members of the board and a statement is expected to follow. She says the CMU will conduct a serious revision of its operational systems. Meanwhile, opposition spokesman on education Peter Bunting says the reports about the CMU highlights a situation of systemic and sustained abuse of public trust. He says it also shows a severe dereliction of duty on the part of the council. Mr. Bunting says while the board of the council should resign, the taxpayers of the country are entitled to full accounting of the stewardship of the board. He says a silence on the part of board members is unacceptable. Mr. Bunting says he's looking to engage members of the board at the Public Accounts Committee to determine how they exercised oversight of the CMU. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness addressed the issue of corruption and leadership in politics at a party meeting in Clarendon yesterday. It's the Prime Minister's first public comment following media reports on the Auditor General's report on the CMU. Mr. Holness says the major challenge in dealing with corruption is the public's belief that it only includes financial implications when it includes much more. We now have to start to widen the view of corruption to focus on things like conflicts of interest and lack of performance because it is as much a diversion of resources when someone has a task to do and don't do it Mr. Holness also indicated that new laws will be enacted and existing ones amended to strengthen the anti-corruption framework. We are studying it fully. We are putting in place as fast as we can the legislation to support it and giving it the resources. But there is the strong commitment to ensuring that Jamaica is a place that is considered to be of high integrity, a place where people can come here and feel free to do business, a place where you can do business and don't feel that you have to get involved in some corrupt act in order to get what you should get normally and rightfully. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. We have more stories right after these messages. At Nutsford Express, everything matters. It matters that our customer transportation officers are trained for 12 weeks before captaining their first passenger trip. It matters that your precious cargo parts on time and arrives safely. It matters that you enjoy the comforts and convenience of home. Because at the Nutsford, we move what matters. Except goats. We don't move goats. If you are living in pain and you are tired of trying products that just don't work, you are not alone. Try Omega XL. Omega XL is a powerful omega-3 joint health supplement. Omega XL has 22 times more omega-3s than regular fish oil. This natural anti-inflammatory helps to provide relief from pain associated with inflammation. Now available in Jamaica. Visit your local pharmacy, supermarket, or health food store. Start putting an end to your pain today with Omega XL. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Jamaica Labour Party leader and Prime Minister Andrew Holness has responded to speculation that a general election will be called this year. The election is due by next year. The People's National Party has stepped up its campaign in preparation for an election being announced. 
Speaking at an Area 3 Council meeting in Clarendon yesterday, Mr. Holness said the government was focused on maintaining stability in the country. He says nothing will be done to derail that plan. I hear a whole heap of people talking about election as if it's them going to call it in. <laughs> you know, I see man already gone to the, the starting line, you know, ready to take off. I mean, I, yes, ready to take off. <laughs> but let me assure Jamaicans, that this government is not going to put politics over the national interest. At this present point in time, it is in the nation's interest to maintain the stability that exists. In news overseas, China has reported 139 new cases of pneumonia caused by a new strain of coronavirus, including a third death, as the outbreak spreads to more cities. Beijing confirmed two of the cases on Monday, and the authorities reported one case in Shenzhen. They mark the first cases in China beyond the central city where the virus first emerged. Total known infections now exceed 200. The sharp uptick in cases come as millions of Chinese prepare to travel for the Lunar New Year holiday. Although the outbreak is believed to have originated from a market, officials and scientists are yet to determine exactly how it has been spreading. And extreme weather is sweeping southeastern Australia as the country continues to battle deadly bushfires. Storms have brought heavy rains to fire-hit regions of eastern Australia, but authorities warn the bushfire crisis is still far from over. More than 80 blazes were still burning across New South Wales and Victoria on Monday, despite downpours. Hailstones the size of golf balls pelted Melbourne, where the Australian Open tennis tournament just begun. Hundreds of emergency calls were made as hail smashed office windows and car windshields in the capital. Further severe storms were also forecast for Sydney late on Monday. And in sports, the West Indies have advanced to the quarterfinals of the Under-19 Cricket World Cup after defeating England by 71 runs on the Duckworth-Lewis method in the group stage action in South Africa earlier today. Batting first, the Caribbean side posted 267 for 7 from their 50 overs. Kevlon Anderson top scored with 86, while Naeem Young added 66. In reply, England reached 184 for 9 after 43.4 overs before the rain came. The English were 71 runs behind the par score at that stage. Young returned to be the pick of the bowlers as he took 5 for 45 from his 10 overs. Young is now the sixth West Indian to have a five-wicket haul in the history of the Under-19 World Cup. In the other Group B encounter on the day, Australia hammered Nigeria by 10 wickets. Batting first were Nigeria and they were bowled out for 61. Australia ra raced to their target inside eight overs. The young West Indians will now go in search of group honours in their last group game against Nigeria on Thursday. And the West Indies senior team drew their T20 series against Ireland after recording a nine-wicket victory at the Warner Park Sports Complex in St. Kitts on Sunday. Batting first, the Irish were bowled out for 138 in 19.1 overs, thanks to Kieran Pollard and Dwayne Bravo, who took three wickets each. Kevin O'Brien top scored for the visitors with 36. In reply, the Caribbean side got to their target with nine overs to spare. Lendl Simmons led the way with a 91 not out, which is the highest score in an international T20 game. Evan Lewis also chipped in with 46. After the second T20 finished in a no result due to rain, the series ended 1-1. Earlier in the tour, the West Indies won the ODI series 3-0. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.